four-time Miss Olympia Jay Cutler. Welcome to my channel, Jay Cutler TV. And make sure to stay in tune with the newest and updated videos. Subscribe below, guys. Thank you so much for following along. guys welcome to another Be Built by Bros live from the Mecca and uh, what we're going to be doing for you today is demonstrating a few sort of unique exercises to work the brachialis muscle which lies underneath the biceps helps to give the arms a more dense look a thicker look and also will contribute to increasing the peak you can't actually change the shape of the biceps but if you work the brachialis and build it up it'll push the biceps up and give a greater peak so I'm going to show you some great exercises for that muscle so Dave is doing the uh, seated concentration hammer curl. Again, awesome for the brachialis muscle. As I pan around him here, you can see he's using a hammer grip on the dumbbell. He's leaning his torso forward and he's keeping his elbow tucked into the inner thigh. And this really isolates the brachialis muscle which lies underneath the bicep. The bicep is still doing work, but the brachialis is working just as much if not more than the bicep, which help creates that, that ball that's right under the bicep, giving much more density and thickness to the arm from all angles. Excellent movement for the brachialis. Okay, so this exercise, is an incline, single arm, preacher hammer curl using the cable machine. As you can see, we have an incline bench set, a little bit greater than 45 degrees, leaning over the bench. It's got the entire upper arm resting against the bench, hammer grip on the cable. He's just using the end of the cable and is coming up and squeezing at the top. This movement is excellent for the brachialis, especially because it has tension from the bottom of the movement to the top of the movement, and it really allows you to get a good squeeze at the top under tension. This is not a movement where you're gonna be looking to go too heavy. You wanna get a full range of motion. Move the weight slowly up to the top and down to the bottom and make sure you get that full squeeze to really activate the brachialis. Okay, the next movement, again using the incline bench. This time it's set back to about 30 degrees or so. This allows you to get a better range of motion. We have a rope attached to the top pulley. He's grabbing at the very end of the ropes and again using a hammer grip because when you use a hammer grip, the biceps go a little bit slack and it activates the brachialis and forces the brachialis to work harder than the biceps. And as you can see, as he's moving through the full range of motion, right underneath the biceps, that little ball that's popping out, that's the brachialis. That adds a lot of detail to the arm, especially if you're a competitor. And again, like I said, it helps to push the biceps up a little higher, giving the illusion of greater peak. Again, you're using the cable, so make sure you get a full squeeze at the top and take advantage of that. Again, another great movement for the brachialis. Okay, so for this final movement that we're showing, is a low cable reverse curl. Again, when your hands are in the reverse curl position, the biceps are forced out of the movement to a great degree and the brachialis takes over. Of course, you're also working the top of the forearms. So you get a lot of thickness in the forearms and then up through the brachioradialis and the brachialis. He's back at about 45 degrees. He's got about a shoulder width grip on the bar. As you can see, very, very important his thumbs are on the same side of the bar as the rest of his fingers, which helps to get a better contraction of the brachialis, helps to keep the biceps out of the movement a little bit more, and makes it a stricter, tougher movement. Not going too heavy, full range of motion, good squeeze at the top, another great movement to help peak the biceps. Okay, Biggie, it's the uh, Ask More of Monday part of the show, so you have, uh, you have a good question this week? 
Yeah, I got an interesting question about um, deadlifting, um, and I was asked if you're going to do deadlifts uh, as your first exercise in the workout, uh, what would be you know an intelligent warm up to get ready for deadlifts? Obviously, so you don't get injured. Uh, and uh, it's a good question because obviously deadlifts is a movement that um, involves a lot of muscle groups and it's very easy to pull one of them, especially the lower back, the hamstrings, the glutes, the hips. So if you're going to do deadlifts first, the first thing I would suggest would be to get a general systemic warm-up going, like something like just to get the body temperature up uh, and get warmed up with something like you know riding the bike or walking on the treadmill for five to ten minutes just to get your core temperature up, uh, just get the muscles a little bit warm. Uh, just get your mind ready for the deadlifts ahead. Uh, after that, um, I would definitely loosen up the lower back uh, with doing some maybe just some side bends, uh, no weight involved, just back and forth, maybe 20 to 25 reps per side, uh, and then also do some torso rotations. So the rotational muscles uh, in the lower back and hips and everything are also nice and warm. Uh, you may also want to do a little bit of stretching, uh, especially in the hamstrings, uh, touching the toes. Uh, and those types of things, um, especially if you have a very, very tight hamstrings, which a lot of guys do. Uh, and then after you've done that, you should be ready to, you know, go into your, you know, your sets. Uh, obviously, um, I would work through a couple of warm-up sets, uh, and I would not spend time doing, you know, long 15 to 20 rep sets or anything like that. I actually prefer people to do uh, shorter but multiple sets. So let's just say, for instance, your first. Uh, set is going to be with 275 pounds. It's going to be your first work set. Uh, so maybe you would uh, do, you know, 135 pounds first. Maybe do five or six reps. Uh, do 185 after that. Uh, four or five reps. Then jump to say 225 for just two or three reps, uh, and then go into your first set with 275. Uh, a lot of people overdo the warm-ups, but uh, and that you know can actually cause you to lose some strength builds up some lactic acid in the muscle uh, and therefore your performance will go down when you do your work set so you really don't want to go crazy on your wall set you just pretty much want to um, teach your body show your body the movement you're about to do uh, just get your body neurologically ready uh, for the lift uh, so you don't need so many reps uh, and as long as you've done that pre warm up to the deadlift uh, you should be okay so that's how i suggest you get ready for deadlifts when you start off with them uh, first thing in the workout would you do that though would you would you suggest people to start with deadlift because you never do it where, where do you think it would be uh, more beneficial in the workout i think it depends on what your goals are you know obviously everybody has different goals you know maybe if your goal is you know to build a bigger deadlift then obviously you you know want to start with them because you want to do it when you're fresh um, if you're if you're you know somebody who is playing a sport uh, like football or you know an explosive sport where you need to have that power, again deadlifts would go well at the beginning of a workout. I think for bodybuilders um, who are primarily interested in, in development of the back muscles and using the deadlifts uh, deadlift as a hypertrophy movement and not really so much as a power movement or a strength movement, it might be better to put them later in the workout. Uh, sometimes even last in the workout. I think it's a great way to finish up a back workout because, you know, it works everything at the same time. Obviously, you have your hamstrings, your, your glutes, your quads, your hips, and your lower back working, as well as even the traps and, and the forearms. Uh, so it's a great way to finish a workout. And again, you won't have to go as heavy as you would in the beginning of a workout because you'll be pretty exhausted by that time. So I think it works great at the end of the workout. Uh, and I think that you'll be, you obviously be very warmed up. You won't have to worry about injury, not have to use as much weight. And I think you can have a better mind muscle connection finishing with them. So that's what I would suggest for bodybuilders most of the time. All right. Thanks, Vicky.